All right, y'all. So, I actually don't want to be on the stage. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, girl. I feel like. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I am just so excited to be here. Let me first say that I'm really excited to be here. This is the first time I've ever been invited to talk. So outside of the camera. So, you know, this is new for me. But I'm really excited because I'm doing this with Bree. I met Bree in 2008. We were both like, how old were we? 15, 16? I'm just small. Small. Small, <laughs> whatever. And, that and weird. Yeah. We were both <laughs> awkward and growing up. And, you know, we met, we went to this camp called Camp Community, and it was all about diversity. And um, that's really one of the first times that I figured out that I was supposed to be a leader um, because they asked me to do it. I was like, I don't know how many people they picked us. A lot of a people. Lot of people. Yeah. And so we all went out and we were at this camp and that's where I met her and we were both like so excited because we all felt like we all had the same drive to be leaders and to help people and so um, we kept contact and here I am today. We're both married, you know, yes. so. Lit. <laughs> You know, we've grown up and everything, so it's really, really good to see how she's spreading the gospel and helping people, yeah. and I'm willing to do the same thing, so that's why I'm here. I also want to really quickly just thank my husband, who is in his absence. I wanted to thank him for letting me come, because being apart from your man is not easy. <laughs> you know, it used to be with somebody all the time, and it's like, dang, like, I need you here with me, but it's fine. He said, I got this, so I'm a little nervous. I'm going to shake it off. Shake it off. I'm a little nervous, but... Hopefully, you know, I can get through this without freaking out or crying. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, I do do YouTube. I love beauty, I love hair, I love makeup, obviously. I love fashion, um, and I really like to empower people to feel beautiful and to have confidence. And because my name is Victoria, you know, I like to encourage people to be victorious. So my name on Instagram is Victoria Slogan. It's not a shameless plug. I'm not trying to tell you to follow me. But, um, <laughs> but, um, but, um Yes. Are you are you are you a selfie? Yes, you're I don't think you are yes! The Victors I love I call my, my followers my Victors because I, I want them to know that they're victorious as well. But um, I love them like everywhere I go, I find one and we like I'm like, girl, you here with me, like I feel like I have friends everywhere. So I don't like to look at people as like they're like my followers, like, oh I'm like a celebrity or whatever. No, it's like I like to encourage people, they encourage me, we both lift each other up, that's how we do. What was I saying? Oh, I'm here to talk about how to be victorious, because that's my name. My name is Victoria, and it means victory, obviously. Um, so I am always looking for ways to make sure people know that they can be victorious too, because I don't want anybody to ever go through life feeling like they can't be victorious, especially if you're a Christian, Jesus got your back, right. you know? Yeah. Like, you have the victory all the time. You got this, you don't have to be a victim of your circumstances, where you came from, um, what people did to you, what you may have done to yourself, anything that ever goes wrong with you at all, just know you always have the victory, right? Okay, so I have notes in my phone, and, one second, I'm gonna pull this up. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're gonna, I can sing. <laughs> I don't have to think. Okay. So I like conversation. I love conversation. Um, I love to like, I actually like go live on Instagram like all the time because I don't like feeling like people are just watching me. Like I like to interact with people. So I need you guys to be interactive. When I talk, you know, you can say yes, or you know, like speak up, don't be quiet. Yeah. Don't be shy. We all friends here, okay? <laughs> I wanna feel like I'm talking to my friends. So I actually have a question for you guys. I want you to answer for me so I can get started because I want to just start talking. So my question to you is, what does victorious, what does being victorious mean to you? Stepping out of my comfort zone. Ooh. It's a mindset, a lifestyle. Yes, yes, a mindset, a lifestyle. That's good, y'all are good, yes. So to me, being victorious, I kind of already said it a little bit, but to me being victorious is all of those things, um, but I think what really it means to me is not being a victim. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes people can victimize, we can feel victimized by people and we can victimize ourselves. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of what they were saying was kind of like resonating with me because it's like sometimes you can be splashing water in your own face, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so one of the ways that I like to remember that I'm victorious is to remember that I'm not a victim. So I'm not a victim of my circumstances. I'm not a victim of anything that has ever happened to me or what somebody's done to me. I'm bigger than that. And I actually took this really funny, it's funny, we were talking about this yesterday. I actually took this quiz, like it's called the 16 personalities quiz. It's like a test online, you can take it. It tells you what kind of personality you have. And so it was talking about how I don't, I don't know how to express my emotions properly. So one of the ways that I deal with stress, anxieties, anything like that is I suppress it. 
and I try to hide it from people. And that, to me, is how I lose my victories because I am putting too much pressure on myself. I grew up a PK. I need, I need PKs now. That's preacher's kids, preacher's kids. I grew up a preacher's kid. My husband did too, so that's kind of why we like to click because you know we get each other. Um, but being a preacher's kid is you, you feel like. I, like I do now, like there's always like lights in front of you. Like people are always watching you, people are always judging you, people are always trying to figure out who is she gonna preach, what she gonna do. She's probably super holy. She probably can't do nothing. She probably can't go nowhere. She probably don't really like nobody. She thinks she's stuck up. She thinks she's better than me because she a Christian and whatever. <laughs> like that's that was my whole life basically growing up. And so I always felt like I was alone. And I always felt like nobody could understand me, like nobody could get me, like I'm by myself. I'm like, it was like being, it was kind of like being a celebrity, but not a, like in a good way. Like I don't have money, I'm just, people just watching me and, and expecting me to do stuff that I don't want to do. All my life I like had this pressure, like I was supposed to be, you know, like perfect all the time. I couldn't really grow up um, the way I wanted to be like other people basically. I couldn't go to parties, I couldn't, you know, wear certain stuff that I wanted to wear, I couldn't hang out after a certain time, I couldn't have a boyfriend until I was 18. So I felt so much pressure to either be super holy and set apart from everybody and feel alienated or be like everybody else and then disappoint my parents and disappoint myself. And it was kind of like this internal battle that I always had between those two things. Um, but one day I realized that in doing that, I was putting so much pressure on myself that I wasn't being who God called me to be. I've had to realize myself. The thing about being chosen and being, being called by God is that it's a choice. You have a choice. You cannot do it. Like, yeah. If God called you, you can be like, no, that's okay. I don't want to do it. And go your own way. There are plenty, plenty of preacher's kids out there who do that. And when I got to a certain age, I kind of had to come to the realization that, you know, my relationship with God is not, it's not my parents' relationship. Right. It's not my church's relationship. It's not anybody else's but mine. And I have a choice to make. Mm -hmm. And I can either be like all the other bad, because y'all know preachers, people say preachers' kids are bad. Mm -hmm. right? Like, they the worst kids, they do the worst stuff. That's not true. Not all of us do. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I had a choice. I could either be like them or I could be myself and I could be who God called me to be. So it's a choice. So anytime you're thinking about, you know, how you can be victorious, how you can be successful in life, how you can really be who God calls you to be, remember that it's a choice. God is not gonna make you do anything. He's not. Like, God is sovereign, he knows the end, but we have a journey that we have to go through. And on that journey, we have choices we have to make. Every day you make choices. And you have to decide every day, are you gonna live for him or are you not? Um, because I have this platform, people ask me questions all the time. Like I get questions every single day. And particularly because I know I'm a Christian, they always ask me about, you know, how do you have a relationship with God? How do you build your relationship with God? How do you um, stay, like the one question that I always get is, how do you stay celibate when you're single and you don't want to give it up? How do you stay celibate? What do you do? And it's like, I'm like, y'all, like, it's a choice. You can if you want to. You can make a choice. And so anytime you're going into anything, remember, like, it's like, you have to think about how you have the victory and how you're victorious in everything that you do, so you make a choice based on that. Um, one of the struggles that I've had growing up is that, um, especially as an adult, dealing with not feeling good enough, mm. putting too much pressure on myself, not feeling good enough. And that's one of the things that's really, have, I've had to strengthen my relationship with God because of that. Um, it's kind of like the stigma where they think that because you know, you know God and you're going through this journey with God, it's like everything just automatically becomes peachy and everything's perfect and it's easy and it's not. And so I put too much pressure on myself sometimes because it's like people expect me, like I'm, I'm a preacher's kid, but I'm also a pastor's wife now. So I sit on the front row of church every Sunday. Sometimes when he preaches, I gotta sit up on the pulpit and people are probably thinking whatever about me. And it's like the pressure of how people think and perceive you can be so damaging to your confidence, to your spirit, can be damaging to like your everyday choices. It's like thinking about what other people think. And so then it makes you feel like you're not good enough. And so that's one of the things that I've been struggling with, um, becoming a pastor's wife and being an adult on my own, making my own decisions. It's like, I don't have anybody else as a crutch to lean on anymore. It's like, this is me, this is my choices. And so, because I, I, I feel like I'm not good enough sometimes, I forget that God already qualified me to be who I am. It's not like, 
yeah. he just picked me up out of nowhere and was like, oh, now I want you to do this. Like, no, there was a plan from the beginning right. for mm -hmm. me to be where I am today. Yeah. So the fact that I'm putting so much pressure on myself and thinking too much, overthinking about everything, overanalyzing, always thinking about, you know, what people think about me, it's, that's not even, I'm not even supposed to be doing that because God is like, I already called you. Like, what, what are you doing? Like, why are you putting so much pressure on yourself? Come on. I already know you yeah. got this. So yeah. what, what are you doing? You know? So that's, I always have to remind myself, I'm a victorious person. I'm not a victim to what people think about me. Mm -hmm. I don't have to, I don't have to put so much pressure on myself because I was already qualified to do this from the beginning. Right. So I have to make certain choices when I go out to my day to day to make sure that I'm not continuing to put that pressure back on myself. So they touched on this earlier um, and I was like, yes, come on girl, you touched on this and I, I was about to say that. Um, one of the ways that I remain victorious throughout my day to day is I have to be selective. Um, just like I said, you make choices. When you make choices, be selective about your choices. You, have to, you can't just do anything and everything and expect to continue to have a strong relationship with God because that's false, mm -hmm. okay? Because a lot of people, they use this excuse and my husband hates this excuse, he hates it. He's like, stop saying you're human, duh, you know you're human. God knows you're human, he knows you're gonna make mistakes, but don't use that as an excuse to make bad choices or to make excuses for your choices. Always think about what you're doing when you're doing it and be selective. So when I say be selective, like there are certain things that are distractions and i have another question for y'all because i can talk about my distractions but they may not be the same distractions for you so i want to know what you guys distractions are if you know them you know yourself social media yeah. social media food food <laughs> money, money. Yeah. Sleep. movies sleep <laughs> yes girl that's mine too <laughs> sleep anybody else men Any distractions? men men Else? Be real here. I mean, like, that's one of the things about being an adult, too. You got to be real with yourself. You can't be lying to yourself. You can't keep lying to yourself. Because then you're victimizing yourself. You're making yourself look dumb to your own self. It's like, why are you lying to yourself? Like, do y'all have conversations with yourselves? Yes. I do. I talk to myself all the time. I'll be walking around the house like, like, come on, bro. Like, why did you say that? You know they're going to get mad at you. And they'll be like, I know, but like, I wanted to say it. Like, this is what I feel like saying. Like, no. You can't say that. You know what? You right. Do better next time. <laughs> Distractions are real, and there's so because we live in a technology age with these oh, yeah. Yeah. devices. Mm -hmm. There's so many different distractions, and I feel like I have it a little bit harder because I am on. I'm a social media person. I'm an influencer, and it's my job now. So I can't like just be like, man, forget it. Like, no, this is how I make money. So. <laughs> but one of the one of the issues with that is I'm literally always on my phone, and I feel like I don't have a choice sometimes because it's my job. Like I have to be on here. So there's so many different distractions, like all day, every day. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? Check your check your check your phone. Right. And it's like I could easily go to the Bible app. Like I could easily open up my phone in the morning and go to the Bible app and just be like, okay, just me and you, ready? It's like as soon as you wake up, you got all these notifications. You click on them. Now you're scrolling, then you see something that somebody did. Oh, that's cool, I wish I could do that. Somebody had something on that you wanted. Oh, I wish I could buy that. It's so easy to yeah. get trapped up yeah. in distractions. Even if you don't do social media, like they said, men, you go to school or you go to work and there's and you're single and you're available. You know? <laughs> and you know, you know you look good or whatever. And it's like you men are the distraction that you find men attractive and of course you want to be with one, but it's like <laughs> God, like, where's my man at? You have to be careful about what, how much time you put in to things other than God. Yeah. You have to wake up every morning and make a decision. It's not like you just automatically wake up and want to talk to God. Because that's not, at least not for me. I don't wake up every morning like, I want to talk to God today. Like, sometimes I'm thinking, because I'm an overthinker. I overthink things. So sometimes I wake up with a whole to-do list, especially when you're an adult, you got, like, bills. You got the car, the car just broke down. Oh, my tire is flat, I need to go get my tire. Okay, I gotta put the oil change. Oh shoot, my dog's barking, I gotta take her out and go potty. Oh shoot, man, I gotta cook breakfast for Vegas. Oh, he's already up, he's already gone. Okay, I'm gonna myself breakfast, I don't know what to eat. Like, it's literally a whole thought process. When you wake up in the morning, it's like, God's like, <clears throat> hello. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm here, yeah. though. Yeah. Did you forget? Yeah. You have to remember 
to be selective with your time, with your energy, everything you do, be selective. Don't let just any and everything go in and out of your brain yeah. every morning or every day. Because like she said, like by the, you can wake up with so much confidence and you can wake up just together and everything's together. And then by 12 o'clock, you're drained because you've been on your phone all day, people getting on your nerves, somebody cut you off while you was driving, you forgot your keys at home or so, whatever. And you go throughout your day and you lose so much of that victoriousness that you woke up with and it's like, dang, where'd it go? So you have to be selective. So make sure you're keeping good people around you who can speak life into you. That's one of the things that I've, I've struggled with growing up is I never really had a solid friend group because I was a preacher's kid and I floated from church to church for a long time. Um, so it was kind of just like, I never had a solid group of friends. So I didn't know what it looked like to have supportive people around me. And so when I became an adult, I didn't realize how important it was to have that kind of support system because you can feel alone. Being a Christian, sometimes you can feel alone, like a lot, and you're not. But it just feels that way because everybody else is doing whatever they want to do. It's like, but I have these these morals and these rules that I have to follow. It's like, sometimes I don't want to follow them, but I have to because I know if I'm going to go to heaven, I got to do this right, you know? Um, and you only, you only get one chance to mess up. Like, once you mess up, it sticks with you forever. So you have to make sure that the people around you are good people and they they actually love god they actually pray they'll pray for you they're not just thinking about themselves they're not just trying to use you for whatever make sure you're keeping good people around you who talk about good things who do good things because it's it's nothing more draining than wanting to love god and do right and you have a friend who's just like girl you know you can just come with us to this like one party like i mean you can come with me right you're gonna be my real dog or they always have a problem and they always want you to give them a shoulder to lean on, but they never give, they never give you a shoulder to lean on. You know, you need that balance in your life. You need people in your life who can balance you and you can keep you balanced and say, girl, you got this. Like, if you know what your purpose is and you, have, you tell your friends your vision, like they should be able to uplift you and encourage you and help you through that. And be like, girl, I got you. You know what? I know somebody. We can make this work, you know? Instead of people who, they may see what you're doing, like, oh, she thinks she's better than me because she know her purpose and her calling or whatever. Like, she thinks she's better. Like, you know, you don't need people like that in your life. So make sure you're being selective about your friends. Make sure you're being selective about the music you listen to, about the TV you watch. Sometimes the shows you're watching can influence you to make bad decisions. Yeah. You don't know it, but if you watch too much love and hip hop, I promise you, you gonna wanna throw a drink. You gonna wanna snatch somebody with. I promise, like, it don't take much. Somebody mess with you, they do you wrong, they do you sideways, you're like, girl, if I had a drink, I would throw it right now. It's like, where'd you get that from? You have to remember to be selective about what you're letting in to your brain. It can subconsciously rewire you. So that's what being selective is. And I'm telling you, the moment you become more selective, it's so much easier because that pressure is like lifted off of you. If I wake up and listen to Travis Green instead of waking up and listening to Future, then my day is going to go a little bit better. I mean, I don't know what Future be saying anyway, so it's not like anything that he's saying is influencing me because I have no idea what he's saying. He sounds like he's underwater. But, underwater. but you get my point. It's just about being selective, making sure that you're making the right decisions, surrounding yourself with the right people. You're always going back to praying and meditating on God's word, keeping it in your heart. I have like a list of encouraging scriptures that I keep. I literally have them typed out in little sticky notes. I have them on my computer screen. So every time I open up my computer before I even get on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, one of my favorite scriptures is Joshua 1, 9. Yes. And it um, says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid for the Lord your God is with you wherever yeah. you go. Yeah. That's like my favorite scripture. It's actually, um, it was on a, a, a bookmark and it had my name on it. And that was like the scripture for my name. So I feel like that's like, like my scripture, like yeah. it's mine, like God wrote it for me. So I keep that with me. I always keep um, Philippians four, Philippians four and eight. Is it four and eight? Think of, think on good things. Yeah. Think on good things, because I have a wandering mind. I have a very overthinking mind, and if I, I can overthink myself into depression. I've done it before. 
because I don't know when I feel stuff because I'm emotionally oblivious. Apparently. Like, the test told me. <laughs> yes, the test, like the test knows me. <laughs> but because I, because I don't know how to channel my emotions and like figure out what I'm feeling when I'm feeling it, sometimes I could be hurt and not even know. And it bottles up and it bottles up and it bottles up. And I never really know that I felt that until it comes out and I blow up on somebody. Yeah. So I have to make sure that I'm not always in my head, always in my own head, depressing myself. Because you can do that. I can wake up in the morning and be on Instagram and see somebody doing something like, hmm, I want to go. So you have to make sure that you're always reassuring yourself, reading your scriptures that uplift you and encourage you. Like I said, keeping the people around you, uplifting and encouraging you all the time. Um, and, be, and just make sure that you're always reassuring yourself. You are victorious, you can do this, you got this. If you don't know your purpose, or even if you do know your purpose, you still need it. Because I was just telling the girls, I'm front here, I was watching a, um, I was like, do y'all follow Elevation Church? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Elevation Church be lit, don't it? Yeah. Girl, they be giving, they listen. But there was a message called um, The Pressure of Being Gifted, and one thing about finding your purpose is that once you once you find your purpose, it's like everything gets harder <laughs> from there. It sounds discouraging, but I promise you, it it makes sense. Okay, so like it's like when you're gifted, the more gifted you are, the more pressure you're gonna feel because you you know what you have in you, and now you have to figure out how to use it. And there's always gonna be people. There's always gonna be naysayers. There's always gonna be people who don't really believe in you. There's always going to be other things that you think you could be doing, or sometimes you doubt yourself. Um, so it's like the more the more gifted you are, the more pressure you feel. And you have to remember not to keep putting that pressure on yourself. Going back to what I was saying, you have to make sure you're uplifting yourself, encouraging yourself, getting encouraged with your, your word, and listening to the right music, and making sure you're always being positive, keeping positive people around you. That's what it's all about, right? So, let me see. I think that's it. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> um, I thrive with uh, questions. I, I do much better when people ask me things and I just talk, so I'm gonna sit. Um, so, do you guys have any questions for me? Um, so with you coming up in YouTube and being like very speedy out in the world, how did you initially deal with I guess like the negativity or people like coming at you about who you are? Well, I will say that one thing is I've always had, I, I feel like I've had pretty good confidence growing up because my parents always tried to instill good confidence in me. But it's it's hard because um, like the older I get, it's so weird because I never used to feel things until I got married. And all of a sudden, all these feelings <laughs> came out of nowhere. I'm like, where did this come from? I don't know what this is. <laughs> Um, but like the more the more you become an adult, the harder life gets. So it feels like there's more things to be insecure about. Um, and so I constantly have to, like I said, do what I do, read my scriptures. I have to back. Sometimes you just need a real good unplugged week, mm -hmm. like take a week off. Sometimes it's just too much. Sometimes people saying stuff is too much. You can get on Twitter and everybody's talking about how much they hate Trump. Everybody's talking how crazy the world is. Something gets bombed every day. Somebody gets shot every day. It's just, it's exhausting. And negativity can be like so damaging to your spirit. You have to keep yourself uplifted. So that's why I say like just unplug sometimes. Like sometimes I'm like, y'all, I'm gonna go missing for about a month. Y'all ain't gonna see me. And I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> Cause I need this time to really like make sure that I'm living right. Like every year, my church goes on a fast, and it's so convenient because my birthday is the first week of the year. So <laughs> I'm always fasting on my birthday. I think that's the little sacrifice I have to make. Um, but every year we go on a fast, and like that's like the most refreshing time because it's like fasting can really help you to make sure that you and God are still connected, like yeah. getting that connection back. Because when you don't hear him anymore, it's like the most frustrating thing ever. If you know what that feels like to hear God and then you don't hear him anymore, it's like, wait, who am I? What's going on? Um, but you kind of, like I said, you have to just make sure you stand prayed up all the time, keeping good people around you. That's really what helps me balance that negativity out is um, I, I try to make sure that I communicate with people in real life. Being social and vulnerable and out there on the internet is not, it's not real. Like. You think people know you and can feel you on the internet? They they really can't. Like it's something about being in person with somebody and having that connection with them. So I always make sure that I'm balancing out my time that I spend on my phone with real life. So when we go out to eat, 
phone stack. Everybody put their phone in the middle of the table. We ain't, we ain't on our phones. We gonna talk and have conversations. And that's what really helps to keep me motivated and built up when people just talk about how my wig was sideways and my eyelashes really wasn't all right. People say crazy stuff about me. Like, they think they know your whole life because you're on the internet. So they say all, like they think they know everything. They think they know all of my business and they don't. And I just be laughing because I'm like, Little do y'all know, I know Jesus, and Jesus already said I'm beautiful, so I don't need these things. Uh, no, no, I know they're lying, so ain't nothing but the devil. The devil knows how to be slick, and he knows where you're weak, and he'll, he's going to find you where you're weak, so make sure you're always building yourself up, okay? How did you build your following? How did I build my following? Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it kind of just happened. Like, I really wasn't trying. Like, I promise y'all, I'm so not, I was, well, I'm trying to be more personable these days because I know I'm not a people person that much. I'm kind of like half and half extrovert, introvert. Any introvert and extroverts out there? Yes, that's me. Like I like I love to be around people and it like gets me pumped up. But I also really like to be in my room yeah. and not talk to anybody yeah. um, and talk to myself because I feel like sometimes people don't understand me. Um, <laughs> I actually went to a private school in high school, so I hated it. I wanted to go to regular school so bad. I used to watch Liz McGuire and stuff, and I was like, I want to go to regular school. Like, I want to go photography class and do all this. I went to a private school. I'd wear a plaid skirt every day mm -hmm. with knee eye socks. And, I mean, I felt like my whole personality was stripped from me. Like, I felt like I couldn't be myself. And I already felt like that growing up, so the fact that I couldn't even wear what I wanted to wear, and I love clothes, I'm like, are you kidding me? This is terrible. So, at one point, I, um... Didn't really have any friends. I didn't really have a way, an outlet to be myself. So Facebook, um, they had this new feature where back then it was a new thing. Wow, I'm old. Um, it was you could upload videos, and so I started making videos in my car before school, and I would just sit there and rant about all the things I hated about school and how nobody liked me and all this stuff. And people thought I was hilarious. And I'm like, y'all, I'm just literally being myself. Like I'm not even trying. Um, but people thought it was good, so I just kept doing it, and then I made a channel. Um, on YouTube and um, I started getting like views and I was like, okay, people think I'm cool, okay. <laughs> I don't need y'all, the internet's got me. Okay. <laughs> so um, then I just started making videos and I went to college and I started getting into makeup and stuff because I couldn't wear makeup until I was 18, y'all. So, you know, I started learning from YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so then other people were making like these beauty videos and I got really inspired because I wanted to try it myself. And then I started practicing on all my, all my friends and Brie, Brie remembers I used to do people makeup and I come over there and do her makeup and we had fun. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but they encouraged Yeah, you still have that picture? That's how I got started and I just kept going with it. And I loved it because I felt like I could really empower people that way. Like people could hear me out um, and you know, I could be myself, so, and that's, that's kind of how, it, it just grew from there. I honestly was not trying, it was such an accident. I thought I was going to go to school to be, I don't even know, like a news reporter or something, something that I wouldn't call it do. Um, but, then I realized I love making people feel beautiful and teaching them about makeup and beauty and all that stuff. People think it doesn't matter, but it does. How you look, you know, it matters, doesn't it? It, it matters. matters. Yeah. I think so. It matters. So, yeah, it kind of grew on its own. I honestly was not trying. I was just being myself. And that's why I tell people, like, if you want to do what I do, I mean, you can. It's really easy. You just get a camera and be yourself. Okay. Um, I have some middle schoolers here. I'm going to stand up. And so I even see. know um, just walking with God at our age is even, like, hard. And so I guess being that young, how do you, like, walk with God and still be able to, it's not, and not even just being cool, but how do you still maintain because I think when a lot of the younger girls look at like people in the church, I know it took me a long time to follow God because I was like everybody's lame and whatever. <laughs> yes. so, like, That's real. And then the Lord was like, nah, girl, I gotta fix your life right now. So it came faster. But I always said like when I'm thirty, I'll serve the Lord then. But obviously we need him sooner. But I wanna see like for the middle schoolers, what advice would you give them like for this walk and just like walking it out at such a young age? But how do they do that and still maintain their sense of like youthfulness? Let me tell you, being being a Christian does not have to be boring. At all. I think growing up, we the people who raised my generation, um, they were a little more strict. They were a little more conservative, and um, you know they made it seem like we couldn't have fun. They didn't explain why, and I think that was the thing. Um, they never explained why we couldn't go to parties why we couldn't drink, why we, they was like, oh, drinking is a sin, and it's not, the Bible's not in the Bible, drinking is not a sin, but they just say that because they don't want you to do it, because they don't want you to make bad choices, 
And I think understanding what, what you do and why you do it and how it can affect you and what the consequences are for it will make you not want to do some stuff. It'll, make, it'll humble you real quick. I'll say the best way to do it is get some people around you who have the same goals, like they said. It's so much better to do it when you're young, to start when you're young, to get a relationship with God when you're young. Because if you wait until you're like 25 and you've already set in whatever you've been doing and then try to change, it's harder. Because now you've got all this other stuff going on that can distract you. You have so many minimal distractions when you're younger. So I feel like if you put in the time to develop that relationship, relationship with God now, it's a lot easier. And trust me, you can still be you. You can still wear, now I don't want to say you can wear what you want because you, you know, your parents you know, I don't want to get nobody in trouble, okay? <laughs> but you can still be yourself, you can still be fun, you can still tell jokes and laugh and giggle and, I mean, you can still do that stuff, but you also know that, you know, you're not just here just to be here. You have a purpose and while you balance being fun and energetic and still being yourself, make sure you know that it's rooted in Christ and you're always reading your Bible and making sure you like get to know God like like they said find a, a um, find a version of the Bible that you can read and understand and it's not boring to you like I have really cool friends who love God they love to like hang out we have game nights and we have fun just you can still be you you can still have fun but you don't have to be like everybody else who cares about being like everybody else they they don't really like themselves no way and you'll learn like people half the people that you want to be like don't even love themselves right that part that right, part. right. <laughs> they don't their lives are not that easy it's never as easy and i always say don't ever wish you were somebody else because you do not know what they go through yet to be them just make sure you be in yourself because that's the easiest we the easiest way you can go it's the easiest person to be is yourself so